Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Elders for the Global Evangelistic Ministry. So glad to be here with you. Amen. Uh, welcome to another Sunday afternoon. We're glad to be here at this time. Uh, honoring the Lord in what he is doing. Amen. Praise God. I, I'm so grateful for the, the, the privilege and the ability to actually stand before you. Amen. I do not take it lightly uh, because I recognize that uh, it is the Lord that put me in this position. Amen. And it is a serious task. And it is something that I must do with all my heart. Amen. And so I truly, truly thank God. For those that would actually uh, tune in and for those that would actually come and be in the services. Amen. Even now, I want to go into a word of prayer and settle uh, the, the matter that the Lord is above all the earth and he's strong and mighty. Amen. In our lives, even at this time. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, blessing your name, God, giving honor, glory, and praise to you, Father. God, I thank you, Lord, that I don't come, oh God, with anything special, God, but a desire to hear, to speak, to say, and to do what it is that you desire of me on this day, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that you would minister to the hearers, God. I pray, oh God, that everything that will come against those that are watching, Father God, would be stopped. And your peace, your rest, and your joy would flood their homes. And they would experience your love in a way as never before. God, I pray even now, Lord God, that even as I begin to share what you've given me to share, that God, it will be received. I give glory, honor, and praise to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. Uh, Philippians, if you go with me to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. Praise God. Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to be reading from verses 4 through 8. Hallelujah. King James Version. Philippians 4. Verses 4 through 8. Amen. And it reads... It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts, minds, through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. I, I want to talk today uh, 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 concerning God's joy. Uh, there is something about joy. And there's something about God's joy because the reality of it is, is that joy is not something that we can create or produce or uh, 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 it's uh, uh, cause to come about without the Lord. Amen. Now we we joy is a delightful feeling. We we recognize that, but but we recognize that what what the author is saying, what the Apostle Paul is saying is, he's telling us to rejoice in the Lord always, always. Um, I, I, I was talking the other day and I was telling them that, that when I, I was telling the people of oh God that when I find myself in trouble, I actually, one of the first things I do is I stop and I say, thank you, Lord. When I find my thoughts going differently, I actually stop and I give praise to God and say, uh, Lord, I love you. When I find myself angry 
and 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 I'm 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 steaming. You you know what I'm talking about to the point you don't want to talk no more and stuff. I'll stop and I'll lift my hands and I'll give honor and glory unto the Lord. Uh, this is a practice that we must learn, and it seems like an oxymoron. It seems so impossible. It seems strange, oftentimes, because if we've learned to live in uh, being angry, if we've learned to live in being sad, if we've learned to live in, in being uh, 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 troubled when trouble comes, praising the Lord in the midst of your trouble seems weird. That, that when you get angry, instead of saying what comes to mind, right? Because sometimes we want to say everything that comes to mind. We want to get it off our chest. Instead of saying what comes to mind, you stop and say, thank you, Lord. And, and uh, when you're feeling sad and deep, uh, deeply, uh, 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 deeply uh, concerned about a matter, and it seems like it won't go away, uh, to stop and say, Lord, you, you, you're in control. I believe you, God, and I trust you, God, and I, I love you, God. And I and that, that sounds weird because it sounds like it has nothing to do with what you're going through. Some of us uh, oftentimes, and many of us oftentimes, and even myself oftentimes, are moved by our emotions. Moved by what we're dealing with, what we're, what's happening, what's going on. And if we're basing life based on how we feel, then we messed up already. Right? Because, because the idea of happiness is based on what is happening. And if what I'm feeling on the inside is not making me feel better, then I don't care how much you give me. I don't care what you do for me. I don't care how good it is. It will not satisfy. It will not be enough. It will not change how I feel. And so the Apostle Paul, he's, he's, he's addressing the people of God and he's telling them, rejoice in the Lord always. Because rejoicing is where our breakthrough is. Our perspective, the, our mindset, the way we're thinking about a thing, the way we're looking at something is what causes things to be different. Rejoice in the Lord always. Right? Not rejoice in your bank account. Right? Because the, they, say, they say the fear of the rich man is, is never to be poor again or never to not have. The fear of the poor man is never to have enough. Rejoice in the Lord always. But then after he says it, now one thing about the Bible that I can tell you about the Bible is when the Bible says something more than one time, that means it's very important. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. That this is the key. This is something that's going to help us to make it to where we're supposed to be in life. Uh, many times people say, Eldridge, you must have a gift. Eldridge, I've seen you go into different situations and come out of situations and we don't know how you've done it. Well, it wasn't because I was so special and it wasn't because I was so great. It was only because I read this passage of scripture and when situations arose, I might not have did it at that very second. I might not have did it at that very moment. But I've learned the quicker I get to rejoicing, the quicker I get to giving honor to God, the quicker I get to giving praise to God, I know the quicker that these things start going away. Amen. That I've learned to rejoice in the Lord, even when it don't feel good. Amen. I've learned to rejoice in the Lord. We, I experienced the passing of my mom last year. After her passing, I couldn't wait, right? Because you know that, that, that this right here could have changed my life forever. It could have changed my perspective about everything. And what me and my son did, what we found ourselves doing was worship. We began to sing unto the Lord songs of praise. Later that day when I saw my wife, we got together again, and guess what we did again? We worshiped, and we sang songs 
of praise. We began to speak to the church at different times because we knew that in order to be able to make it through such a pressing time that we were going to have to do something to keep us up. And what kept us up was not going out to eat. It, what kept us up was not trying to figure out how many people were viewing what was taking place. But what kept us up was we ran to the house of God and we began to pray. We prayed out, we gave thanks, we praised, we, 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 we prayed out our frustrations, we prayed out our aggravations, we prayed out. Why? Because I wanted to be healed. I, I begin to come to God and I say, God, and, and listen, y'all, I'm not, this is not a judgmental statement or nothing. I'm saying this is what I had to do in that time. Right? Uh, I, this is what I needed to do in, in order to make it, right? And so what I began to do was I began to tell God, God, I don't want to be overwhelmed. I don't want to be shut down. I don't want to be overtaken. And what I began to do was I began to worship on a regular basis. I began to cry out to him on a regular basis. Now, now when you say worship, you say, Pastor, what you talking about? You talking about singing songs? Well, not necessarily. I'm not. When I speak about worship, I'm not always talking about singing songs and waving from side to side and, and waving my hands in the air. I, I'm not talking about that. When, when I talk about worship, I begin to tell God how good he is. You know, uh, the definition, one of the definitions of worship is worship, we, when we worship God, we, we worship God for who he is. Right? That's one of the definitions of worship is that we worship God for who he is. So that means that, that during worship, I begin to tell God that how awesome he is and how wonderful he is and how great he is. And when I begin to tell him how awesome he is and how wonderful he is and how great he is, somehow he began to take my pain. I don't know how it works. I cannot fully explain it. I cannot tell you how it goes, but I do know what happened, right? And so because I know what happened, I know what to do. Right? Uh, one of the definitions for worship is we worship God for who he is, and there's another definition for, called praise. And, and the definition for praise is we worship him, we praise him for what he's done. So I began to, 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 to and then, then we could go ahead and we can thank God too. And what I began to do was I began to tell God how wonderful he was, how great he is, and what he had done in my life. And then I began to remind him of how he had kept me and how he had blessed her life and how he had done what he did for me. And I began to worship God. I began to praise God. I began to thank God. And he kept me. It doesn't mean I didn't have any sad days. It didn't mean I didn't have no trauma or trials or tests, <coughs> but it meant that I knew how to go through. I don't care what you're facing. I keep saying it like that because I got to say it like that. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care how long you've been going through it. I don't care what has been taking place. I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that God is able to make a way for you. He's able to cause that which will cause you trouble to be lifted. He's able to bring change to your hurt and bring peace. See, the reality of it is, is that the, to, to rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, it's almost like, how does that really work? It's almost like somebody telling you you can't have any emotions. You can't be sad and you can't be mad. Well, that's not true, right? Because God, so many times in the Bible, the Bible actually begins to speak about the different, the Bible talks about Jesus. He wept at the gravesite of Lazarus, right? Uh, he talked about that he was angered when he flipped over the tables of the money changer. So that can't be true about our emotions, that we can't have any emotions and we can't feel anything. Uh, and that we're, that, that we're trying to control these things. No. But what we've learned is, is that when we give our emotions to God, when we learn to give that which uh, we cannot handle on our own back to God, God will cause us to be able to rejoice in the midst of our trouble. He goes on and says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, 
By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That we will come to God. No matter what we're going through, I, I, I want to encourage somebody that you've been getting frustrated. And, and when you get frustrated, you stay frustrated for a long time. Your frustration don't leave. It stays around. And it hangs out. Sometimes for hours. Sometimes for days. Sometimes for weeks. Sometimes for months. Oh, your sadness is not an ordinary sadness. When your sadness comes, it don't go away. And you're waiting on another opportunity for it to leave and it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Or maybe your anger, it does not want to let you go. It won't let you forget. It won't let you forgive. It constantly reminds you and it rolls over and over and over in your mind. And every time you think about it, you get a little bit more upset and stay upset a little bit longer. With, I don't care what you face and I don't care what you're going through. You can actually take anger, your angry self. You can take your sadness, your sad self. You can take your mourning, your mourning self to the Lord. And the Lord knows how to produce that which you have need of. He knows how to give us that which we cannot produce on our own. Again, happiness is based on what is happening. We try to create events. We, we try to create meals. We try to create different things to cause us to feel better. We're not creating joy. We're working on being happy. But joy truly comes from God. He, he goes on, he says, he says, let your, verse 5, he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Now here it goes. And the peace of God. And the peace of God. Wait, let me read it again. Verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Praise, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Praise, worship, and thanksgiving with uh, prayer, right? With prayer and supplication, right? Making requests unto God and, 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 and giving praise and worship. Worshiping God for who he is and praising God for what he's done and thanking him, right? Be careful for nothing but in everything with those things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to take place. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I can't explain it. It goes beyond understanding. But when, when I begin to find myself in certain situations and circumstances, I can begin to praise God. I can begin to worship God. I can begin to thank God. And in doing that, I believe addictions will fall off. I believe that bad habits will go away. I believe that strange friends will disappear. I believe that things that have been broken will be reconciled, put back together, and made whole once again. Uh, areas that have been wounded and hurt will be mended once again. But it's a matter of us coming to the one that gives us joy, true joy. Not what we see on TV. Not what we think joy is. But the true joy maker. See, joy is something that the Holy Spirit gives us. It is a working of the Holy Spirit. When we begin to look at the fruit of the Spirit, one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joy is a working effort of the Spirit of God. Joy is a working effort of the Spirit of God to cause us when things are going bad that the Spirit can cause us to have a better outlook on life issues. It can cause us to, to see things differently. 
Uh, I've told you that, that at different times people say that you, you must be special. You must be unique. And, and, and I'll be doing something. I'll be going after it. And I, and I know some of us have dealt with this where we've actually got on a project or we're, we're working on something. And we're trying to get it done. And then we hit a roadblock. And it looked like it's over. This looked like the biggest problem that you've ever had in your life. And nothing's going to get around it. And we're not going to get it done. And now we might as well just throw in the towel. In those moments, I stop and I take a moment and I say, Lord, thank you. I believe. I trust you. I begin to tell the Lord what I think about him, right? God, I believe. I trust you. I honor you. I know you can make a way. Right? And it gives me fresh perspective. It gives me new uh, insight on, on how to handle the situation. Because in, the, in that moment, when I open myself up, not to be overwhelmed by fear. Amen? Not to be overwhelmed by concern or worry or anxiety. I actually listen to hear what the Lord has to say. This, see, see, the reality of it is, uh, uh, it, it, it is, it is very hard to believe that that a praying people, a people who pray all the time, and yet when they go into prayer all the time, when they come out, they angry. A people that pray all the time, or we say we pray all the time, when we come out, our attitude is really jacked up. I believe that every time, and this could be elders' experience, or maybe it could be just my thought, but I, I believe it to be true, that every time we go into the presence of God, we're going to be changed. We will never leave the presence of God the same way that we go in. We will never leave the presence of God the same way we go in. So I believe that every time we pray, something is happening. I don't care if what you were looking for exactly, specifically has taken place, but every time we pray, something is happening. Something has changed. We will never be the same going into God's presence. We'll never be the same coming out. Amen? Uh, we pray. We As a matter of fact, we pray. We say, how you feel now? I feel better. I feel a little bit better. I feel, uh, yeah, I feel all right. I feel all right right now. Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good, right? That's how we pray until folks get better. I don't believe that you go into God's presence and leave his presence the same way you went in. And, and, and I, this is a little bit different than the prayer that I think we think about when we're thinking about prayer. Because I know we, uh, we pray, but sometimes when we think about prayer, we're thinking about our grace. Lord God, bless this food we're about to receive. Amen. Let it go to all the right parts. <laughs> Amen. Let it work. <laughs> Limit some other stuff. And bless it to be healthy for our meal. Amen. And sometimes we recite those prayers. Like like nursery rhymes, amen. We we say them so quick, so fast. We can hum them out. We can say it. We can say it in our mind. I think we said it out loud, right? But I'm not talking about those times. I'm talking about prayer when you actually set aside time and say, God, I need you. God, I trust you. God, I love you. Amen. I, if you if you come around me a lot of times, if you want to know the secret to, to my success, if you want to know what is working in my life that keeps me the way I am, I tell God I love him a lot. <laughs> I love you, Lord. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell him I love him a whole bunch. That's the secret. If you're looking for a secret sauce, ain't no secret words. Ain't no uh, secret mantras. Ain't no secret words to, to express and say that I'm going to say over and over again. There's no magic words. Amen. I tell the Lord I love him. And when I tell him I love him, he showed me he loved me. <laughs> he showed me. Because I never leave his presence the same way. I don't care what I feel like. And as a matter of fact, uh, my family, they're learning to, 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 to understand that, that even when stuff starts jumping off, I'm already in. I'm already, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. We're never to, to remain angry. We're never to remain mad. We're never to remain frustrated. We're never to remain irritated. Because if you come out of prayer and you're still mad, angry, frustrated, or irritated, then you need to go back into prayer. You need to go back. You haven't been long enough. Amen? Amen. Because when we come out, we should be different. 
Our thinking should be different. Our, our attitude should be different. Our behavior should be different. If you come out of prayer, you was arguing before you went into prayer, and you come out and you still arguing, you need to go back into prayer. And let the Lord work it out. Not you, not the other individuals, because sometimes you want other people to figure it out. No, don't, figure, don't let them figure it out. You let the Lord work it out. Go back into prayer. See, what we recognize is uh, the presence of God brings about joy in the midst of our turmoil and our stress. The presence of God brings about joy in the midst of our turmoil and our stress. As a husband and wife, me and my wife, we've made a commitment that if I ask her, would she like to pray, she never tells me no. And if she asks me, I'm never going to tell her no. Would you like to pray? Because sometimes you don't feel like praying. <laughs> or maybe I don't feel like praying with you. <laughs> but if we ask, you feel like praying? The answer is always yes. Right? Because we'll never leave his presence the same way we went in. God will actually change us. When we find ourselves going into God's presence, God gives us a new perspective on how we are to respond to our trouble. Amen? Amen. The reality of it is, is that it takes joy to live. It takes joy to live. Okay. It's enough hard things, enough things that we're troubled about us, enough things that concern us, that are taking place, it takes joy to live. And that's how Christians, we can have joy and it look like everything is going wrong. My bishop, uh, we, we, we were at a large church at one point in time and, and, and I, I would see him, I was a young believer and I would see him walking down the hallways and he, he, he was the first one there and the last one to leave. Bishop Ray Lorraine. He was the first one there and the last one to leave. I, I, I would be there because at different times I'll be there in the morning, at different times I'll be there at nighttime. He'd be the first to come, the last one to leave. And no matter what was going on, he'd be walking through the hallway smiling and singing songs. <laughs> I'd say, hey, this is for real. That this is not a pretend thing. This is, this is, you know how people put on a smiley face because the camera's on? Hi. <laughs> he was singing songs unto the Lord. He was worshiping God. He was praising God in the hallways when nobody was around. I learned a very valuable lesson. No matter what is going on, no matter what we're facing, keep a song on your lips. Keep a song in your heart. What is your song of victory? Come on, somebody say, amazing grace. Somebody say, look what the Lord has done. Right? Well, what, what is your song of victory? You've got to have a song of victory. What is your song of victory? What is the song that you sing when things are not going as they should? Come on now. You, you know that song. You know that, you know that song. You ain't got to tell me right now, but you know that song that you sing. There's a song that lifts your spirit. There's a song that causes you to have joy in the midst of trouble. In order to live this life, we need joy. We can't do it without joy. See, joy can also be understood as constant delight in God. Constant delight in God can be another definition of joy. See, what I want to I want to encourage uh, 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 one, one writer says that joy it is a constant inner knowing of a believer that all is well. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Joy it is a constant inner knowing of a believer that all is well. 
within their relationship between themselves and the world. And regardless of the circumstances, based on changing, based on unchanging eternal divine promises of God. No matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the situation is, uh, based on the unchanging eternal divine promises of God, you know that it is well. I want to encourage you, like I stated a little bit earlier, joy is not a result of favorable circumstances. It is not a result of favorable circumstances. Now, we can actually experience something. Now, I want, I want to get this right. We can experience something that is good and find ourselves in great delight. And you say, I feel joy. Right? But the joy of the Lord has nothing to do with favorable circumstances. Joy is a gift from God. Come on. Have you heard? Have you heard us pray this prayer? I receive my joy now. Amen. Joy is a gift from God. Believers delight in the blessing they already have. Amen. It's something that we've already received, and now what we have to do is, is we just gotta act on it. And one writer says, fullness of joy is found in knowing God. Isn't that powerful? That to have, to, for your joy to be full. Don't you want your joy full in life? For to, to experience fullness of joy, it, it is found in knowing God and delighting in the excellence of his character. That we can delight in how good God is. How wonderful he is. We don't have to be sad no more. Amen? Because we can take as believers what God has already given us and we say, God, I receive your joy. And say, God, and I thank you for your joy. And begin to tell him why. And you will begin to experience joy. Oftentimes people, when they actually begin to use different substances, they're looking for something to replace what they feel on the inside, what is going on on the inside. They're looking for something to replace. And what God has said is, I will offer you, I will give you fullness of joy. And you can delight in my excellence of my character. And I will give you joy. James 1, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Can I tell you that in this life uh, that we're going to live, we are going to, we already know it to be true. We can already understand that this life produces trouble, there will be some trouble, there will be some testing, and there will be some trials that come. But as believers, we're guaranteed joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. As believers, we already have the joy of the Lord. Now we have to begin to live it. That's right. We were never guaranteed trouble free. Painless, peaceful, non-difficult experiences. A life untouched with problems. He never promised us that. As believers, the Bible says many are the afflictions. But then he commands us, rejoice in the Lord always. Right? James, uh, the, the Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And, and James, he tells us, count it all joy. <laughs> Add it up. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that you go through situations and circumstances, add it up. This plus this plus this plus this equals joy. 
Because what happens that, that when we go through trials and tests, we know that the testing of our faith does what? It produces patience. Sometimes our anxiety and our stress and our worry is because of lack of patience. Or can I give you another word? A lack of endurance. Perseverance. Amen? Amen. Then when we add it up, I went through this and I went through that and okay, okay, and this, this right here, okay, I got it, uh-huh, but okay, but what's happening in me, okay, I see, okay, oh, I'm going to get some joy, <laughs> I'm going to get some perseverance, my endurance, and my patience is high, Amen. What we recognize is that every adversity that we face, this is this is what this is another author, this is another author, this is a, another another great commentator commentator. He says that in every adversity that we face, what you know what we do? You know what we do? What's the first thing we're supposed to do? We keep our trust in our Heavenly Father. Every adversity that we face, everything that we go through, we make sure the first thing, the first thought, the first intention is to keep our trust in our Heavenly Father. We believe that He is in complete control of every situation, that we're not going through anything that has slipped past Him. The enemy didn't creep in, the enemy didn't get us by accident. God is in complete control, and whatever it was supposed to be, it will not be. And so therefore I can have joy by faith in advance before I say it over because I know you're going to do it. In every situation, God gives us exactly what we need. Amen. Amen. And guess what? In, in, in some situations, he's going to give us joy. In other situations, you know what he's going to give us? He's going to allow us to have sorrow. In other situations, you know what he's going to give us? He's going to give us trials. And in other situations, he's going to give us triumph. But in every situation, God will not allow us to take on more than we can bear. Because he knows exactly what is needed for that season. Sometimes we, 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 we want to do God's will, but God says, you're not strong enough. You, 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 you ain't got, the, you ain't got the, 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 the wherewithal. You don't have the, 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 the fortitude. You don't have the, 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 the ability to, to press in and go through. And so I got to toughen you up a little bit. So I'm going to make sure you get a little bit of this and a little bit of that, not too much of this, and you're going to be all right. You're going to have some perseverance, some endurance, some patience, but most of all, you're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. The Lord is able to do these things. Do you know the Apostle Paul, he knew what was going on with the people when he wrote this, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Do you know that James, he knew what was taking place place in the hearts and the minds of the people when he said this. James, when he wrote in, in James uh, 1, 2 uh, uh, James chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, he, he wrote this uh, uh, because they were being persecuted. They were being persecuted for their faith in Jesus. And the first command that he tells them, what is the first command that he tells them in the book? The first command, this is the first command he tells them, my brethren, count it all joy. First command, first command in the book, 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 in the book of James. My brethren, count it all joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into various trials. The first command that he gave. Why? Because we don't lose our confidence in God because of the circumstance. We don't lose our trust in God because of the situation. We don't lose our confidence in God based on how long it's been going on. Right? 
And so what happens is, even in the midst of it, while you're asking God, God, take it away. God, help me out. God, I thank you. Now what you can begin to do is begin to praise him. Lord, I thank you. Have a long God. I'm not going to worry no more. Lord, I trust you. I believe you, God. You're going to bring me through this. And God, I'm going to go through this with a different attitude. A fresh perspective, God. I'm going to come out. Amen. Because I know that if you are on my side, you will not allow me to get anything that I'm not supposed to have. And God, in my sorrow, I praise you. God, in my triumph, I praise you. God, in everything that I'm facing in my adversity, I praise you. Because I know that you're in control. Can I tell you, when you start prayers like, praying prayers like that, do you know your stuff speed up? You get to pray and pray and about God, I don't care how long it takes. I don't care when you bring me out. I don't care. Do you know what that is? That's faith, y'all. What moves God? Faith moves God. And when you begin to tell God that however you do it, because many times we got a checklist. God, I need it done like this. And I need this person to show up. And I need this person to help me. And I need this much money. And I need this to work out. I need this to be settled. But I don't care how, when you start saying, God, I don't care how you do it. I don't care when you do it. And I don't care why you do it. Oh, that's what God started moving on stuff. He started moving stuff out the way. Hey, and you, 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 you start finding yourself coming into the blessing. It is the Lord who does this. Uh, James, he, he, wasn't, he, wasn't a, he was not clueless of what was happening. The people, they were losing their homes. They were being persecuted. He was aware of their struggles. But his first command was to rejoice. Not out of ignorance. But because of the fact that he knew that this is what would bring them out. This is what will cause their testimony to shine. This is what will cause the breakthrough to come. Right. To rejoice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even now, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray this prayer with me? I pray that you will repeat this prayer with me. Because I believe that when you repeat this prayer and pray this prayer, the Lord will do something in your life. Amen? Amen. If you've been lacking joy, I believe that he's going to bring your joy. I believe that he's going to bring your rest. I believe that you will receive your peace. Amen. Even during this Father Day season, for those that are that are, 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 are grieving the loss of loved ones and fathers and um, uh, the inability to actually be with children, I pray that you would go before God, that you might receive what you need in this season to make it through well. See, we, one of the things, and I, I, I got to say it, one of the things that, that we have to remember is that there's more at stake than our own personal reputations. Amen. There's more at stake than how we look in the eyes of others. Yes. We want to honor God in our living. We want to remain mindful to honor him as believers, yes. as those that lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. It is a hard statement, but it's true. Amen. I've had places in life where I had to remember that it was his name at stake yes. and not just mine. Amen. Because I wanted to let people have it and Amen. give them what I thought they needed and not look a certain way in the eyes of others. But God knows. Yes, he does. And he can work your situation out far better Amen. than you. Yes, that's right. 
He can turn it completely around. You can say, I would have never saw that. I didn't see it coming. But he's able. Amen. For those that have not received Christ, will you repeat this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please forgive me, please forgive me of, all my sins. of all my sins. Lord, Lord I, believe I believe that you died, that you died and, rose and rose again. Lord, Lord save, me. save me. I receive, I receive my, salvation my salvation now, now. in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I'm going to pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you now, Lord God, asking, oh God, that you would actually meet the very needs, oh God, of those online, those that have been the building, Father God. I pray that your joy would be renewed, oh God, that they would experience your joy in a way as never before. Lord, send your joy to their lives. Cause your joy to cause them to receive the benefit only that you can give. We say thank you now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you all for joining us. It is such a wonderful time of coming together with you all during this season. I want you to join us. Be our very special guest. Even next week at 1712 Hoveland Court, Everson, Illinois. Um, amen. We would love to have you. Our services start at 1215. I want to say God bless you and keep you. May God continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Until next time. God bless you.